Well, hello, chaps. It's Commodore Grim here. Thank you for joining me, and welcome to a short tutorial for beginners on um, Terra Firma Craft, or to be more precise, Terra Firma Craft Reloaded. This tutorial is about how to survive your first night in the game. Now, Terra Firma Craft works very differently. I'm right clicking on these, by the way. On the on this these rocks and sticks it works very differently from normal minecraft you'll find that many of the normal recipes don't work how you start the game off doesn't work um you know uh it's you'll actually be playing for quite a long time before you even get a pickaxe so oh excuse the little bit of lag there so the first thing that you need to do is wander around collecting a whole lord of, oh, bismuthinite. Right, okay, so one thing that you should do is whenever you find an ore, uh, mark it down. You press B for the waypoints. Mark it down, save it, because you'll be coming back for it later. Um, but, you know, we can't really do anything with it now. Uh, if you want, you can pick these up. Um, you may be able to uh, make use out of them. The, the main thing is that you get the waypoint done. Okay, so we've got a bunch of sticks and stones right now. More stones and sticks, it seems. Um, now, the first thing you need to do is make yourself some tools. And this is done in a completely different way from uh, regular Minecraft. Select the rocks that you have. We have Rhyolite, turns out. There are lo lots of different kinds of rocks in different biomes around the world. Select it, right click, and you will get this dialogue, which is the napping dialogue. That's napping starting with a, with a K. Um, and uh, there's a recipe for each sort of tool or tool head. Uh, rather. Now, to make knives, you do that. You can make two of them out of one rock, but you always need at least two rocks in order to be able to do the napping because you need to bash them together, I suppose. Um, and whilst you're at it, it's generally a good idea to make a few because these, whoops, a daisy, these tools break very easily indeed. Um, so you'll be getting through a lot of them. So let's make ourselves just um, a couple of knives for now. There we go. And what knives are used for is breaking grass. If you break grass with a knife, you get straw, which you can use for various things, including making thatch, which you can make roofs for your dwelling and so forth. So you're going to want um, a reasonable amount of um, of straw. Uh, it takes four of them to make one piece of thatch, and we're going to want several of them come the night time. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is make some axes, and axes are like... So... And you only make one axe head at a time, unlike the knives. And again, it's a good idea to just uh, get into a rhythm with this recipe and make yourself a few. Um, because you're definitely going to be needing them. Um, that will probably do for now. Let's actually make a couple of these. And what I'm going to do is put that in the number one slot. This can go in the number two slot. And the other thing that we're going to need is at least a couple of um, shovels. Shovels are like this. You just shave off two columns there and then do that. And again, we're going to make a few since we have a whole bunch of rocks. Sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where there aren't so many rocks available. Um, sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where there aren't many sticks around. Sometimes there might not be much grass. It depends on what biome the game starts you, uh, starts you off in. So, another thing we're going to need is some dirt. Now, the quickest way to do this 
Ooh, gravel there. Interesting. Uh, the quickest way to do this is to knock out um, blocks from underneath the grass blocks, because these take longer to break. But when they fall, they turn into just dirt blocks, and you can dig them out much more quickly. So we're going to get maybe a stack of these, and that actually means um, 32 blocks. Because uh, stacks are reduced in size in this mod pack. Oh, don't want to pick that up. Grab some more rocks. And uh, then we need to get ourselves logs. Now, find yourself the tallest trees you can. Because you'll get more logs out of those. And you just chop away with the axe at the bottom. It's not like normal Minecraft. You just knock out the bottom block and the rest of the tree collapses. And as you can see, you don't get normal wood blocks like in regular Minecraft. You get these logs. But you can place them like regular Minecraft logs. So it does have that much in common. Now, it's worth chopping down, I don't know, a fair number of trees, I suppose. Uh, if you happen to find willow trees, um, definitely prioritize those. Oh, oh, I think we're going to get a lot out of this. Um, Willow trees or any other trees that seem like they have lots of extra logs or maybe they're intertwining with other trees because then you tend to get more wood at a time. Okay, so yeah, both of those trees came down. We have like three stacks of logs, which is more than enough for the first night. So what are we lacking? Uh, we're lacking in sticks. So that's what we want to prioritize. Keep picking up the rocks as well. Uh, a stack of rocks is 32. You only really need one stack, to be honest, uh, to be starting off with, especially if you've already made most of the um, most of the uh, tools you need. Uh, another thing we need to start worrying about is food. Uh, you'll see we have a food bar and we have a thirst bar. Now, the way that you replenish your thirst is you find some fresh water and you hold down the right button on the side of a block that's touching it. So, there's our thirst replenish. We probably don't need to worry about that for a little bit now. But we definitely need to worry... Oh, by the way, if you find some bamboo like this, um, it's sensible to grab it. You can, you can basically use it as a fence to prevent uh, enemies, prevent monsters from getting at you. Uh, we've got less than a stack of that, so that's okay. Um, now, see these yellow flowers over here? Ah, you can actually see... Careful there. You can see some clay here. Now, clay is always marked by these yellow flowers, by goldenrod flowers. So, if you can't see the clay, but you can see the goldenrod, the clay is going to be underneath. So we've got lucky, we found clay very, um, very quickly, which was not the case in my, uh, in my Let's Play. I got to like about episode five um, or something before I found clay, which was like a couple of hours. No, oh, we have a different kind of rock here. We have shale. We don't need it right now. What we are going to need is a bunch of grass. So since we've got a whole load around here, I'm going to grab it. And then I'm going to head in the direction of the beach in the hope of finding some food. Because uh, you can eat seaweed. Now, how many inventory slots do we have left? A decent amount. So each time you... I I'm just left clicking on the base of the block that has the seaweed in it. Right. We're getting towards dusk. Um, if you didn't find C... Oh, wait. What you can do is you press S whilst you're in your inventory. Press S whilst mousing over the, uh, the seaweed or whatever other food you have, and it will combine the stacks. Hold on a second. I need... Every time I end up immersed in water, my... Um, 
uh, ambient sounds go up. Right, the sun's setting, so we need to protect ourselves. It doesn't do to be out at night, especially since sometimes the night is very dark indeed. And what I do is make a little 3x3, three three, like this. Grab our logs. You can't uh, stack the dirt any more than one high. It'll just collapse. It doesn't work at all. Um, and then do something like uh, that. Put a beam across like so. And that will stop spiders from getting in. That's the reason that I've done that. Right. And then if we put ourselves a couple of logs in the entrance. But first what I'm going to do is grab a couple of these sticks. You do this and you get a fire starter. Then if you grab, if you throw three sticks on the ground in the same block. This is how you make a fire pit. Then you hold on the right mouse button until it lights. Sometimes you'll get through a whole fire starter and have to make another one. But we're going to put a log in here and make ourselves our first torches. Clear an output slot. Oh, right. That seemed not to be working for a second, but it's actually fine now. So this is how you make torches. You put a stick in um, in the furnace. The furnace only takes logs. You can't use anything else in here, I, I don't think. Can you? No, you can't use sticks in here even. You can't use straw. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just logs that you can use to fuel it. But once you've made the fire pit, it'll stay there. Um, let's press S here to combine our seaweed stacks. We didn't get very much, but we got enough to feed ourselves. Now we have some light. We can do that. Um, put a torch in here. And it's obviously you want to know when the night ends. So if you take out the middle log, you can, uh, where's the moon at? Um, oh, there it is. So, um, you can build one of these shacks anywhere. You just have to make sure that there's no way for mobs to climb up. So the wall all around is too high. There aren't any adjacent blocks that could allow mobs to walk up here. Um, the reason I've used two logs, uh, here is just so that I can see where the door is because we're not in a position to be able to make actual doors yet. Um, there's no way for spiders to get in because they need a 2 by 2 gap. And uh, that's all to the good because spiders are actually really tough in terra firma craft. So watch out for that. Uh, other things that I would mention in terms of tools. Uh, we can make a couple more tools because uh, I have a couple of sticks that I managed to have left over here. Oh, by the way, if you want to get more sticks, if you've run out, you can put down a log and... Oh, how does this work again? Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Um, make yourself a hammer, and hammers are like this. They're sort of a bit like a shovel on its side. So there's a hammerhead. Uh, if you find yourself fighting skeletons, which I don't recommend, uh, uh, certainly not at this stage in the game, use a hammer for fighting them. Um, because there are different sorts of damage in the game. See that the axe does slashing damage. That's good against zombies and spiders. Um, but that's no good against a skeleton. You want a crushing weapon. So here you'd use a hammer. So if you want some more sticks, Break a log with a hammer. Oh, right, yeah. Didn't hear any sound there, but we did get some more sticks. Uh, the other thing is, um, if you find yourself... If you do find yourself in combat, it's good to have some ranged weapons. And we can't make a bow or arrows. But one thing that uh, you can do is make javelins. Oh, we're getting a little hungry. Let's sort that out. 
And we drank a little water earlier, so that's not really a problem. So, uh, yes, you can make a javelin, and javelins are like so. Basically, you take three corners off, like this, three little sort of L shapes, although some of the L shapes are inverted, of course. And you get a stone javelin head. So let's make another one of those just so you can see it again. So we take off that corner and that corner and that corner in exactly the same way. You get this little javelin head shape. Once more. And uh, javelins are not very durable at all. Uh, you can only throw them at enemies a few times before they break, or at least stone javelins. Um, it depends on what sort of stone you make the javelin out of, actually. Some stones are tougher than others, so that's something else to watch out for. I'm not really sure what the uh, hierarchy is of which stone is the toughest, but clearly chalk is unlikely to be very good, whereas basalt or something will probably be a lot tougher. So let's make those javelins. There we go. And it's not a bad idea to have uh, a few of them on your bar. And if you think you're going to get in a fight, don't have an axe here that's almost broken. Swap it out for another one. Uh, you can also fight with knives, but they do significantly less damage. So the javelin, you can actually use it as a melee weapon as well. It's pretty good. But what you do if you want to throw it is you use the right button and draw it back like a ball. Whoops. Um, but we're not fighting anything just yet, so... Uh, especially if you find yourself fighting spiders. Um, they're really tough. Uh, they have a lot of hit points. You don't want to be fighting them hand to hand, especially since it's so easy to get hit by them compared to zombies since they move more quickly and unpredictably and so forth. So, this is all stuff that you can be doing during your first night, making sure that you have all the tools and weapons that you need. Um, if uh, if you've killed some animals, which, you know, it's best to use an axe for that, and you get meat from them, uh, you need to cook that, and you do that in the fire pit. So you need to put a log in here, put the food in there, and then basically you have to watch it, because the food can burn, and if it burns, it becomes unusable. You lose it. So you have to watch it uh, and, until it becomes cooked. Because if you go off and do something else, by the time you come back, you'll have, you'll have forgotten to come back in time and it'll be like when a bath overflows or some such, or you leave the toast on for too long. Um, uh, yeah, so it'll go through various stages. It'll The meat will go warm, hot, and then it'll be cooked, but it'll say rare, then medium, and then well done. Depends how you like your meat, really, I suppose. So, um, the other thing that I would mention that's pretty important... Um, well, two things, actually. One is, if, especially at the beginning, be very careful in watching out for bears. Bears will kill you very, very quickly, and they're pretty aggressive. So stay clear of them. As you can see, it's starting to get light here. So we have, in fact, survived our first night. So, yes, look out for bears. The other thing is, if you um, manage to kill an animal, you can make yourself a bed to set your spawn. And the way you do that is to place two pieces of thatch and then um, right-click here on, on the end of the bed and, uh, with a hide, because that's one of the drops that you get from animals. You'll get an animal hide. And that should turn it into a bed. And you can't sleep in the bed, but if you attempt to sleep in it at night, um, it will set your spawn. So if you are unlucky enough to die, you'll spawn back in your nice protective shack. So we survived the night, so let's get out of here. And... Uh, Check around for monsters. There's there's actually nothing nearby, as you can see from the mini-map. There's uh, one of the skeletons over here that throws javelins. 
Um, you can just see him still through the mist. Uh, that's like a, a wither skeleton, more or less. I'll put a little lintel above the door there, made of thatch. And uh, then you can continue about your day. I can see there's a bit of clay over there. But this tutorial is just about how to survive the first night, so that's where I'm going to end it. Hope it was useful. Thank you again for watching. Um, if you did enjoy the video or found it useful, don't forget to click the like button. It helps out rather a lot. Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section below. Uh, share this video with anyone you think might be interested, entertained or informed. And subscribe if and only if you'd like to see more. We'll be continuing this uh, series probably pretty soon. The next thing we'll be getting to is pottery, ceramics with the clay over there. So that's it. Ta-ta for now, chaps.